So the success of municipalities is dependent mostly on strong and skilled municipal managers. This is based on a study by the Human Sciences Research Council. The study highlighted the need for bold political leadership in municipalities. It also says municipalities in rural areas bear the brunt when it comes to service delivery. For more on this, HSRC's senior research manager, Gary Pina, joins us. Gary, very good evening. Before we talk about your findings, which uh, are pretty interesting, uh, how extensive was the research? Well, it, uh, it involved a number of municipalities around the country in various provinces. We looked at rural and metropolitan municipalities, um, better run, less well run municipalities, sample of about 16 in total, um, but that was reinforced by a large number of interviews with uh, staff, external stakeholders, senior managers, um, and so. Uh, as well as a comprehensive literature review um, and underpinning all of that. Okay, now, you know, we've just had the local government elections, and one of the things that was coming out of these elections was, you know, the lack of uh, capacity in terms of the skill level within municipalities. But you're saying, uh, you know, one of the key challenges that you cited or that you uh, found was over-regulation. Over, yes, over-regulation. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, it, it is a highly complex uh, governance framework that local authorities have to deal with. Um, they're applying national, provincial and local uh, government frame, frameworks. Um, and so they do require a high level of skill um, in order to navigate those frameworks. Um, and that really, I think, brings us to the point that skilled leadership is absolutely essential in, in order to undertake the kind of leadership um, and planning and the, the, um, the instilling the kind of vision and ethical leadership that's required to navigate that complex um, framework or those sets of interlocking frameworks. So it's, um, it's a, I think it's a, sometimes um, these are, uh, there are capacity challenges, but there are external influences as well, including divides between urban and rural municipalities or category A, category B municipalities and so you, you sometimes find there are a large number of vacancies or unsuitably skilled people, um, officials um, at some of the smaller and less well-resourced municipalities. All of those factors play into those challenges, as well as the very blurred ethical lines at times because of the political administrative interface that's not well regulated. So you find political interference with the administra administrator's responsibilities and so even if you do have skilled administrative leaders, sometimes they're not given the space to lead because there's a political interference or obviously, as we do know, um, there are challenges with, with unethical and, uh, and corrupt uh, leaders and, and officials. And that, of course, also undermines the ability of the local authorities to deliver their services. Uh, when it comes to the skills and so forth, Gary, you know, we've just been talking about mm. the, uh, you know, the two young mayors in, uh, in the Western Cape, and we're seeing a lot of younger people now after these elections coming into council, being elected to key positions. Uh, do you think in any way whatsoever that might, you know, make things a little bit better going forward? <laughs> I, mean, I think that's hard to tell. You know, I don't think necessarily age is the primary consideration here. Um, life experience, I think, can be important. But equally, um, I think you know, the, the attitude of, of young people um, is often quite different to older generations, perhaps is more open to, to listening, more open to engagement, um, is perhaps less um, inclined to uh, be respectful of authority sometimes and therefore might be willing to back trends or um, the way things have been done in the past, they might be willing to challenge that. So I think youth can be an advantage. I think the challenges really are, is the leadership uh, capable of having the kinds of hard technical skills that are, that are able to undertake strategic planning? Are they bold enough and brave enough to provide visionary leadership that is ethical despite the, the, the competing pressures around them, um, are they able to uh, assert their leadership in some, in some situations 
to employ the right people who are able to do the necessary technical things like maintain infrastructure, provide services, but then also to go out there and, and get the money from perhaps often government departments who don't pay their, their municipal accounts um, yeah. and leave these municipalities short of cash. So, um, but also then leading with soft skills. So listening to people, understanding people, mm. um, all of those are skills and I don't think those are necessarily exclusive to either young or older leaders. I think we'll have to see whether or not the, the younger generation have these broad sets of skills and, and re really personal attributes as well as the qualifications and necessary experience yeah. to navigate or else if they do recognize they lack certain of these abilities, do they have the humility to recognize that they lack those skills and then surround themselves with people who are able to complement their own abilities I mean, we, we, fill in the gaps for them. Gary, when you talk about inefficiencies and over-regulation as well, I love the example that, uh, that you give here when you, you talk about uh, a whiteboard that was required, uh, you know, in one of the, let's say, one of the offices within a particular council. And it's such a small thing has to go out to tender. I've always often wondered why, you know, small, small things like even stationery always goes out to tender. These are small things that somebody can actually just leave the office and go and purchase. I mean, is, is that sort of example, does that sort of like, you know, slow down the whole system? Why that particular example? I think I think that's an example of of a of, of, a, of a misunderstanding of the, the framework for, for procurement. So uh, that's an example not so much of the problem of overregulation, but I think the problem of a of a lack of understanding of how to navigate the procurement system and the supply chain management system. So for those kinds of small items, um, if staff and, and management are sufficiently aware of the regulatory framework. They would know that for those small things, all you need to do is go out there into the market, get three quotes, um, and it doesn't need to take you more than a day. Um, and, and following a three to six month supply chain open tender process is not what's required for those small kinds of purchases. So I think that's an example of a lack of understanding, a lack of skill, a lack of insight among some officials who've, who've quoted that example. And I think that was the context within which that example was mentioned. Nevertheless, I mean, supply chain processes can be complex. Open tender systems are over-regulated, I think perhaps sometimes because they have to be, because there is so much corruption. And I think if, if there was a greater level of ethical leadership and a, a tone set from the top by the municipal matter managers, and, there was, there was, and they were able to lead with that kind of ethical uh, tone, um, and they were able to stamp out the corruption that sometimes then thrives beneath an uh, unethical leadership, then I think procurement would not have to be so tightly regulated. And there would be uh, the ability for the Auditor General to say perhaps, you know, let's, let's give that local authority greater discretion or give them greater leeway to do the sensible thing, the practical thing. Um, and we, we won't regard that as, um, we, it might be categorized as irregular expenditure, but it's not fruitless and wasteful. And often those two things go together. The one is a red flag for the other. Um, and yeah. so sometimes there is a nuanced picture that needs to emerge. Um, and, uh, but I think the, the important thing is, is to have strong ethical leadership, and then the over-regulation will become less necessary, and, the, and that, that legal framework can be relaxed somewhat. But it okay. all comes down, I think, to the strong leadership um, that sets the tone from the top in each local authority. All right. Uh, Gary, thank you so much. Let's hope that uh, we now have strong ethical sure. leadership coming into some of these municipalities. <laughs> we, That's we all we can so. do. Yeah. yeah. All right. Gary Pina there, HSRC's senior research manager.